Greetings and welcome back everyone to Factorio Beginner's Guide, where I am joined by Shenrir. Hey, how's it going, Avak? Not too bad, mate, not too bad. And yourself? Pretty well. So between episodes, what have we done? We have just built up a small smelting area. Now this is nowhere near sufficient for what we're going to need later on. But early game, this is, this is quite adequate. And we've also just run the copper line over here so that we're, we're not having to ferry resources around to the science area. And additionally, we have set up something... Well, it's, it's not that we expressly did this, but this is effectively called a main bus. You'll tend towards this in, in most factories because there are certain um, processed resources that you need an awful lot of and are components in almost everything. Co copper and iron plates are really good examples of this because almost everything starts with those. So you're going to have a lot of places where you need this across your factory, so it makes sense to have a central kind of conveyor belt line that just moves that around for you and takes it to where it needs to be. Yep. And uh, what do we plan on covering today? Well, the first thing we're going to do is start using up our research time because now that we're producing more pollution, attacks are happening a little more often. We've already got walls, we've got turrets, we've got logistics, and we've got automation. Now, there are a couple of things that we can build up to. We could increase our gun turret damage. We could make new weapons for ourselves or armor for ourselves. I suggest we work on armor myself. Yeah, I was looking at that as well. Let's go ahead okay. and start that. There it's we go. Very quick. It's it is very done. quick. Look at that. <laughs> I know. Well, we've got a lot of lot of science available. We could make it even faster by adding more researching. Now, there's one other thing that we want to discuss. Under the military tree, we haven't really had a look at this too much. We've now got armor. It only takes 40 iron plates. So I'm going to go ahead and make one of these. And much like the pickaxe, it'll just automatically be equipped. But there are radars. Now, you have these from the beginning of the game. And up to now, we've basically been playing blind. We don't know what's out there. This this is a tiny little portion of the map. We are getting attacked, so there are enemies nearby because the pollution is reaching them. And we're not making that much yet. So what we can do to help with that, other than just, you know, wandering out into the darkness and hoping we don't get eaten by a Gru, is to build a couple of radars. One is enough early game. It does take quite a lot of power, much like the lab. They do drain an awful lot of power. But once you've got one built, it'll just happily start expanding the fog of war. Now, right, if I place one of those, those down, uh, let's find a nice convenient little spot. This will do. There we go. And it does have to be powered, like you said. Yep. So it needs to be somewhere on the electric grid. Uh, they take a lot of juice, and what mm -hmm. you'll see on our little preview window of our map, our mini-map, it will start uncovering new areas. And if you press M, this will start showing a lot more of our yep. world. Again, you... our world is procedurally generated, so yeah. the part of the world that we can see now is the only part that's loaded into memory, which means later in the game, when more of the world exists, uh, the game's going to run a little slower. <laughs> Just yeah. heads up. Generally, though... I found that this game is very, very light on resources. But there we are. There's oh, yeah. the first little sector has shown up. Now, if you hover over the radar, you'll see sector scanning progress. It's a little pro progress bar that lets you know when the next sector is going to show up. If you look on the, the map, though, you'll notice that some sectors are a little bit brighter than others. Now, currently I've got Alt pressed down. So if I turn that off, it's a little bit easier to compare the two because you're not having the red overlay as well. But it's effectively fog of war. The areas which are brightly lit, we can actively see what's going on in there right now, even on the mini-map. If, however, it's a little bit shaded out, anything could be going on there. We're not getting updated about that. So the radar will have a look around, and every time it pings a new zone, that zone is initially seen. It's, it's currently looking there. If... Like, a radar can only expand out to a certain area around itself, so there is a limit to how far it can see, but the more radars you have in a small area, they'll keep pinging these places on the map over time, once it's expanded out everywhere that it can actually reach to, so it's uncovered all of the fog of war, it'll just start randomly checking on areas, just keeping an eye on things. And every now and then, it'll spot some enemies there, and you'll get a bit of an advanced warning that they're marshalling their forces ready for an attack. So it's good. It's a good um, habit to be in to keep keep an eye out for what your radar is uncovering. Mm -hmm. So today we are going to get started on military production, Indeed. and that includes a little bit of automation. Yes. Mr. Avax is going to be building a uh, 
and it was called uh, ammunition automation factory mm -hmm. and i'm going to be redoing our lab a little bit our science production to be a little more efficient um we're also going to be doing what is it going to be belts oh man we ran yeah. out of belts between episodes there we were putting down belts everywhere look at all these yeah. belts <laughs> and they, they take a little bit of time to produce you have to have yeah. the resources in your pocket for it to actually be produced and it's just very inconvenient to constantly build belts in your pocket so instead we're going to set up a small little area just for belt production so when we need belts we just go pick them up we don't yeah. have to build them again this is an example of something you will always need a lot of so it's worth setting up the production though shenron has already researched military tech so we can now actually mm -hmm. equip ourselves with submachine guns which fire a lot fi faster than the pistol pistol has a shooting speed of six seconds and range of 15 the submachine gun a shooting speed of six uh, 15 seconds so over twice as fast the shotgun fires much slower has a better range and spreads out its its damage a little bit differently. There are all sorts of researches that upgrade different types of weapons, and you can look into that later on, but I, I'm just going to make myself a submachine gun for now. It's important to note that uh, ammo is shared across both the pistol and the submachine gun. Yes. So you don't need to build any special ammo for the submachine gun. You just put your pistol back in your inventory, or you can put it in a box and blow it up, just get rid of it. Uh, and you can just replace it immediately with a submachine gun. Also, I've built some armor, just like Avac has, and when you construct the armor, it automatically goes down to your little armor area, uh, so it, it equips it for you. You don't have to. You don't have to think about it. It's just done. Yeah. Now, the, one of the nice things about having the uh, central bus is when you need resources, you can simply hold down F and then run along the central bus, hoovering up him. all like of the resources. Singer. Look at that. I am a man-shaped Roomba. <laughs> it's fantastic. I know someone else like a man-shaped Roomba. <laughs> Indeed. All right. right, so why don't you go ahead and start doing a little bit of the uh, bullet production automation. Okay. Well, and what I'm uh, going to do with that is bullet production only requires iron. So I'm just going to extend the, the main bus out to this little area over here because it's got ni uh, a nice bit of uh, room over here to expand out our production uh, a bit without bumping into anything. And I will let Shen continue with his automation. Okay, so my plan today is to... Uh, move things around a little bit to automate our science uh, in a little more efficient way. The typical ratio that I do, and this may not be the best, the typical ratio I do for science is one gear factory for four little Red Beaker Labs. So I'm going to set up my gear factory here and put Red Beaker Labs around it. Just simple stuff. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm going to set up two automated factories because, again, bullets are something you're going to go through a lot, especially your automated turrets because they fire very quickly. So I'm going to set up two automated factories that are just dumping their bullets into a chest. Later on, I'll actually set up a, a logistic solution that will move the bullets to where they need to be. But for, in the beginning, you probably don't need to worry about that. Thankfully, regular magazines only require iron. There are different types of magazines you can get, like piercing ammo, and that, that is going to require uh, a, a heftier outlay of resources. But for now, this is more than enough for us. Yes, indeed. But hopefully, um, now between episodes there, we did have a little biter attack. Hopefully, we'll have some defenses set up before they come back. And that is yes. something important to think about, is the biters don't come all the time there is going to be a significant delay between their attacks. And this is simply because uh, the biters have to build up to a certain amount before they will engage you. They don't just come all the time. That's right, yeah. So like I said, have, they marshal their forces first. You'll have some time to prepare for their attacks. It is not, uh, it is not a constant thing, which is good. Okay, now... Are you, are you watching me flounder? Indeed. Here? What Shen is doing here is actually using an interesting setup of uh, belts and tunnels to try and squeeze everything into the, the most efficient, tightest space possible so you can not, get everything working. It's not working. very smart. This isn't the smartest thing, but I just figure we can do this for now. We can always move this stuff Indeed, around yeah. later. Absolutely. I tend to build a little bit more spread out myself because I like making things look pretty. And one of the things, that, the worst thing, if, if, you, if you like building aesthetically like I do, is to build up your little factory and it's fine and you build up your walls and you make everything look good and then realize, oh, I just need this tiny little bit more production, so I'm going to have to just expand this line a little bit more, but now it throws everything out because everything was built into such a very specific little space. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, so I tend to err on the side of caution and, and keep a lot of room for myself to expand into. Mm-hmm. 
Now, unfortunately, we're not producing a great deal of am ammunition here, and that is largely because these assembly machines are just very, very slow. So I'm going to build another two of them just to increase the amount of production we've got of ammunition, because, again, we are going to be using an awful, awful lot. However... The best way of doing this, instead of, well, you might have assumed to build the factories on this side of the belt, uh, on the south side, we still want to keep that free for the bus, and also because eventually that would start encroaching on the coal down there. So we're going to change this up a little bit by splitting the metal off the belt and taking it to where we want to use it. So much like Shen, I'm just going to drop down a splitter. But again, I'm going to try and leave quite a lot of room for this setup to grow. And we'll just run this up there. And then we'll have a row of the assembly machines on either side, just grabbing what they need. And then we'll worry about where it puts them in a moment. Actually, we can probably be a little bit more efficient about it than that. <laughs> Damn it, Shen, you got me thinking about efficiency. Uh, don't worry too much about efficiency. I'm just trying to make a little more beakers out of the, out of this because we only at one point. Oh, was it for the last three episodes? We've only had you know one factory making beakers. I yeah. figure we should make more than one beaker at a time. <laughs> yeah, I, ideally, I would be grand. I need more splitters. I use splitters like like candy. They're just so good. <laughs> they uh, are. This, Splitters and underground belts are amazing. This is getting this is getting a bit like a spider's web of of, of electricity poles up by me. I really oh, dislike see, you're, that. You're doing this really nicely. Yeah, th this is what you typically want to do. Avax doing it smartly. I'm not a smart man. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I I think you're being a little bit too flattering for me there by saying that I'm doing this nicely. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Uh. We'll just have that going up like that. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better now. I actually think we're probably going to want a little bit more production than this, so I'm going to make another two. And this is one of the one of the problems is you get you start getting a bit of a sprawl of your production facilities, and uh, you are always at risk of producing way more than you need of everything. Okay, at least so I am. For me. This is done. We have four factories. Four, sorry, I keep calling them factories. They're assembly machines. We have four assembly machines making red beakers now, uh, red roller my flask, whatever, and one gear factory producing all the gears for all four beaker factories. And that's going to work out fine. That ratio is perfectly fine. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is make an automated area for uh, belt production. And it's going to be over here next to Avac, not because I want to uh, crowd him in or anything, but because this is really the best place. There's tons of room over here. And uh, putting down some more, putting down some more automated facilities for uh, for belt production is going to be good for us. We probably don't need that many. How many do you think is good? Maybe just two. Probably just two for belts because they don't take too long to make, and no, you can go for large periods of time without using them. Correct. So with with bullets, once the the game gets into full swing, it's going to be uncommon for you to be able to get away for for more than a, a few moments before an attack wave hits you. Okay, then I'll put down two of those. And how are you setting it up? These things just require iron plates, right? They don't have yep. any intermediate nope. production at all. So okay, they're well, very nice. Belts like are that. a little different. Belts require gears and plates. So we will need an intermediate, a little bit of room here. Nothing too fancy, though. I'm going to do uh, one gear factory for two belts, which should be perfectly fine. And this is, this is something that you kind of have to choose how you want it to be done in your specific factory. Some people choose to produce pretty much everything and put it onto the main area where they're putting resources back. Oh, here come some biters. Oh, ah. shift here. Thanks for the warning there. there. You <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah, now shift that is was, nice. It just yeah. it automa I'm not shift, uh, space. space. It automatically targets the enemies and just kills them for you. You don't have to like target them specifically. So combat in this game is pretty easy in that effect. If you have a specific thing you want to kill, you mouse over it and spacebar it, it goes for that. Or if you just want to shoot a general area where there's enemies, just spacebar it, it's fine. Yeah. So anyway, as I was saying, some people like to put everything onto their main resource area, including gears, including belts, including ammunition, whatever. Some people put everything on here. 
I'm not that kind of person. I like to no. just have like the the plates. That's my my typical thing. Plates. Um, just going to in interrupt just briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, you missed out on putting a little bit of electricity over here, but I wanted to just bring attention to it because this really can happen so easily. It, oh, it'll yeah, happen with us a little bit more often because we're also commentating. But do check back over your areas. If you don't look notice the, thero the throughput that you're expecting, <laughs> look back through the line for anything like this that's missed. Mm -hmm. There we go. So we've got a decent amount of bullet manufacturing going on. So, do you need any help over here, Shen? I think we are good to go. You can hook up some electrics for me. Yeah, certainly. Now, how much go. storage will these have? Uh, they don't have very much storage belt. internally, no. Not very much at okay. all. So we're going to have to put them onto a belt. That's fine. Yeah. That may be a bit of a problem on this side. No, that's good. Ah, uh, yes, of course, because you've just got the top and the bottom. I see, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. There we go. I will drop down a little bit more power down here for you. I guess I'll put a box down here. You'll you'll want to have resources stored in some type of container. Boxes work quite well. And uh, just run it in certain. There you go. Okay. I'm so already doing that with the bullets as well. So we, we've got a reasonable supply of bullets. They stack up to 100 in your ammunition slot below your weapon, so... Bear that in mind. 100, yes, 100 magazines. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we now have automated bullet production, automated belt production. We have a little bit of an improved science area. Uh, what's right. next for us there? We're making some walls, I believe. Yes. Uh, ooh, a biter attack coming from the west. Ah, look there at that. Go. You dealt with them. They didn't even damage anything. It damaged me a little bit. <laughs> ah, but I, I grow it back. Okay, so how do walls work? What do we do? Now, as we mentioned in one of the very early episodes, walls require bricks. And so it's not just raw stone, we're not just making a dry stone wall, we actually need to smelt, or rather bake, the stone into bricks. We use a smelter for this though. So down here would be a simple case of just setting up a little smelter. Now, you don't, generally don't go through bricks nearly as fast as you go through your metals, so you don't need a complex smelting setup. You can build one. But you can get away for a much longer into the game with a very simple thing. But I guess for the, the sake of uh, the future, we should probably set up a little bit of something. And that also gives me an opportunity to discuss one last thing about miners. Now, you wouldn't have noticed it here because I very carefully placed this miner down so that its area of effect was only on stone. But if I were to place a miner with its area of effect on two or more resources... It will actually mine everything. You can't tell it only mine the stone. It'll mine whatever's within its area of effect, and it'll mine it with a frequency or a ratio based on how much of that type of resource is available to it. So if we mm. were to place this down here, it would sometimes pull out copper, sometimes it'll pull out stone. There, for example, it pulled out copper. So we don't want that. We want this specifically to only be getting us stone. You can do certain things to try and... Um, filter the items on a belt and that that we might cover that in the future but for now if I place this one right there and a second one let me see right up here we'll, ma we'll make use of the fact that they've got a, an area of effect rather than just the tiles underneath themselves to try and get every little bit of stone out of here unfortunately we can't oh that's a bit of a shame oh well we'll just <laughs> place this one here then if you move aside chen thank you very much there we go we've now got all of that coming down through here and notice and he's we're carefully placed them so that none of the green area which is yeah. the area they mine none of that covers any copper that means these exactly. will only dig up stone which is what we want now again you're not going to need even remotely the same kind of uh, smelting setup here. So what I was thinking, Shen, is we can just borrow some of the coal, the coal from the smelter setup oh, that we've yeah. got at the top. Good thinking. And just run it straight down the middle. Or oh, down the sides. And we might Make a few more undergrounds over here. Yep. That is a great idea. Oh. Oh. Now, where are those? We're oh, good. It was right on top of you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I couldn't no, quite see it. It's totally your fault, Abak. Ah... Uh, I know. I, I'm, a, I'm a terrible, terrible co-pilot. All right, so let's put down maybe four, just like the copper. Uh, yeah, sure. I can just run this around the outside, actually, thinking about it. 
and that I'll should be just fine. Pop down the belts in the middle, and we'll just have this dropping into a box, rather than um, worrying about it going onto the main bus. You really won't use bricks nearly that frequently. So we can just have a box at the end and an inserter picking up everything here. Now, it is worth mentioning, you do need raw stone. You're going to still be using that a fair bit, to be perfectly honest. So you don't necessarily want to do what exactly what we've done here, which is funnel all of the stone into the smelting setup. Funnel stone? <laughs> yeah. But uh, what we can do instead is we'll make a, a little chest that will just take a little bit of the stone production and move it elsewhere. Do you have any red inserters on you by chance? I do not, I'm afraid. No, oh, we can make some then. I have. I can make two. <laughs> I need to pick up some iron. <laughs> we both do, I'm afraid. And yeah, so uh, this is something we run into all the time. Is you just need more iron. Always need more iron. Yeah. Early game is all iron. Pretty much, yeah. Now, while Shen is putting the last bits to that, let's have a look at what we can research. Now that we're being attacked, we can look at different types of things. We, there's different types of bullets um, or, or shells, cartridges. We can improve the, how fast a shotgun fires. We can improve how much damage it does when it shoots something. We can improve the same for, for regular um, bullets. Later on, we can actually research better types of bullets, that is, armor-piercing bullets. For now, I think we will go for... Well, we don't want anything that requires the green science packs because we're not producing that yet. I think we'll go for optics. That will eventually lead into solar panels. It'll also lead into lasers. But, oh, I'm about to be attacked. There we go. <laughs> Hello, biter. I'm looking at my inventory. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I spotted it coming down. It means a biter's kicking your butt. Yes. Oh, also, they're at different map. alerts. Okay, yes. Map Our map has shown the first biter base just to the west, currently covered All by right. pollution. We'll, we'll so, talk about that a little later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we'll research optics just so that we've got a line. Super simple thing, but it makes a massive difference to your base. Pretty early on, actually. You're going to Are want to be able to see things. Stone over there? Uh, not one more tile. Okay. For the inserted, have room to grab the stone. There we go. Okay. And do you um, mind if I put some stone into a box so that we nope, have a little bit of stone? No, that would be perfectly hand? fine. Okay. I was actually going to mention the way that we restrict that, but you've done it in the best way there, just by having it at the end of the line. Anything that's down there has has already filled out everything past it, and these inserters have had a chance to take the stone from it, so it's perfectly fine to take the stone from there, because it's basically the runoff, if you like. So, Avak, uh, do you notice mm -hmm. that everything's running a little slowly? Look how slowly this miner's moving. Ah, yes. Ah, okay, so this is something we... Probably didn't want to cover just yet, but since it's happening, let's cover yep. it right now. Okay. If you click, left click on an electric pole, it'll show you how much you're consuming electricity wise and how much you're producing electricity wise. If the uh, top bar is not full, like right now, that means you're not producing enough electricity to provide electricity for all your objects at the same time. Now, yeah. that doesn't shut anything down. What this does is it slows it down. So it's noticeably slower here. This miner is moving more slowly than it should be. That's right, yeah. Uh, and if we however, have lamps, not all of them would turn on, or they'd be a bit too dim. Right. However, if the second bar, the production bar, is not full, that means you have more than you need right now. You have more electricity than you currently consume. Yeah. So it's probably a good time for us to expand our electric network, but I'm not sure if we should do that just yet. Do you want to go um, set up we some turrets first? Uh, no, what we can do is we can uh, set up our electric... Um, stuff off camera because the turrets as you mentioned are well you didn't mention it but they don't consume power thankfully mm -hmm. so these later on you can have lasers and as the name might suggest it does draw power to fire that weapon but the basic gun turrets do not and that is a hugely important thing to remember now if you look at my screen at the very top left you can see the biters you'll notice there's a sort of a pulsating spawning area and a couple of wandering biters around that but you'll notice there's a large group of them just kind of chilling out just to the south of that that is a, a group of biters that are ready to attack so we want to yep. quickly yep. set See that up moving over to group that yeah so the way it works is um if we press m we can see our pollution it's this red area you can turn pollution on and off with Alt. Alt is just like your extra information button. 
So if with pollution on, we can see that this little fighter base has pollution over it. And now and then you'll see it flash. What that flash means is pollution is being consumed by the biter bases. Those little huts, those little circular huts that pulsate, they consume pollution and they produce biters. That's if you right, don't yeah. have pollution, they don't produce any more biters. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways you can sort of avoid getting attacked so much is later on you can do clean electricity, solar power, and that doesn't produce any pollution. Therefore, you don't get attacked by the biters so much. But in this case, we're all very dirty pollution-y production right now. Indeed. So we, we got these biters being very angry. So every time this flashes, it consumes all, all the pollution in that square and it produces some biters. And what's happening is now and then you'll see a biter wander down to join this little group at the bottom. There it goes, there goes another one. And this is their attack group. This attack group will build up to a certain amount and then they will come and attack your base as a group. And That's you'll right. always have biters defending their little huts and you'll always have these little attack groups forming. They're attacking. Oh, nice. oh got they've turrets. gone for the middle of our base there, and uh, oh, we're attacking our direction. radar. Yeah, so there's more than direction. one biter group currently attacking. But this is the one we can see for now. Yeah. I've got repairs done. Okay, fantastic. They have destroyed an electricity pole, so I'll just hook that back up. There we no go. Problem. Now, just to cover what I've set up with the guns, because I can see that there are biters and, you know, there's a fairly large group over there amassing, I've decided to put the initial defenses over here. Now, if you will forgive me, I'm just going to quickly make some stone walls. I've picked up a bunch of bricks and I'm starting to manufacture the stone walls. I generally like to leave a gap between my turrets and the walls. You don't have to, it's personal preference, but I find that it just makes everything a little bit easier occasionally i i think that the biters majority of them are, are close combat uh they will have to f uh, physically attack you to do damage and sometimes that damage moves to the wall and here we go Ah, I see they went around your wall to get yeah. to the turret. Look at that. Now, they will path around things. Now, you can get around that by completely surrounding something in walls. But generally, I don't find that's the best thing to do. Because if they can't get to it, they're just going to go somewhere else. And I want them to go for the turrets. Later on, you can make um, sort of killing zones, which intentionally increase the length of time it takes them to get from A to B, like through a, a meandering path, giving your guns more time to attack. But what we have here is a simple setup, two turrets being fed by a single box. Now, the turrets themselves don't require power. However, the electricity poles do. Uh, that is, the inserters do. So you do still need power down here, or you could use burner inserters if you wanted. Now, you'll notice that these things aren't filling up with ammo. They, they're only taking a little bit. They can actually hold a full stack. They can hold 100 if they want to. But the turrets tend to be a little bit more reasonable about things. They try to share. They'll only take 10 because reasonably they can get through 10 in quite a short space of time. So it just gives them enough ammo to use in an attack wave, if you like. But it leaves the rest there so that other turrets can take it so you don't end up with a situation where one turret in a chain of turrets has all of the ammo and then the other 20 have nothing it'll try to 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 share that out a little bit hey avac yes press m press m okay look at the look at the northeast Ooh, that is actually very you notice how quickly that's consuming the the pollution it's yeah. consuming that pollution very fast all right so why don't Ooh. i've got three more uh, turrets in my pocket if you have some ammo uh, why don't uh, we I'll pick up some a up. little area over there? Sounds good. good. Certainly. We've got a lot of ammo now. It's very good and times. This is typically how you do get started in the game. You'll set up uh, little areas to just try to defend yourself. And mm -hmm. eventually you may put walls around your entire base. You may not. It depends like how the attacks come. If they're only attacking your turrets, then you don't need walls around your base. Yeah, exactly. All right, it would be a waste of resources in that case. There we go. I'll just here. grab, on that note, I will grab a couple more bricks and start making more walls. Eventually, and you I'll might want to bonus. automate this process, but... Oh, I believe that was part of the plan. I'm not sure if we can get it all done today. No, we won't be doing it all today. You mean we can't do everything? I know, it's terrible. <laughs> now, you may have noticed that some of these smelters were not operating just then. And that's because the chest was siphoning off so much of the stone that it wasn't getting to all of them. So I've just filled up the chest now, so it's not going to take any more, and it'll give the rest of the uh, rest of the the stone time to reach the smelters and be be used. Sounds good. 
Okay, do you have some walls and ammo? Yes, I do. Or rather, I will be making the walls. Let me, oh, here uh, comes another attack. Up. Look at that mini-map. You can watch attacks on the mini-map, by the way. The little exclamation points mean your turrets are engaging. And uh, this also shows on the bottom of your screen. It says, alerts. Two turrets are engaged with the enemy. And if you have items being destroyed, instead of showing an exclamation point, it'll show like a little nuclear explosion icon. So it's just really easy to, to determine whether or not uh, something requires your immediate attention. If it shows the exclamation, you're probably fine. If it shows the little explosion, then it means you gotta get, you got to get over there and fix stuff. Yeah. Whatever you've got currently, uh, for example, if they are your defensive line and it's showing that, whatever you had is no longer suitable to deal with the kind of attacks that are sending because the game will ramp up in difficulty over time. Mm -hmm. It's mostly attached to two things how much pollution you're producing because the more pollution you make the faster the biters will build up their forces and also the more biters that you've killed the more the aggressive the biters will tend to be here we go we've got another another, another group small group yeah. and yeah that's that is that is an important thing to note is not just your current pollution amounts but also how many biters have died will determine your future attacks. So if you've had a base attacking you over and over and over again, and you keep killing all of the biters that it sends, well, that means every every successful uh, defense will cause the next wave to be a little larger. Yeah. Likewise, once you start killing the bases, because ultimately you're going to have to, it's not going to be a choice. To progress the game, you're going to need something that the bases have, and that's what I was talking about, the richness. Alien artifacts are held inside the bases. You're eventually going to need those. We won't go into too much detail on it, but once you start defeating the bases, it's going to cause the, the biters to really start ramping up. In fact, they'll start evolving. At that mm -hmm. point, the biters, there's not just going to be more of them, they're going to be stronger. There'll be different types, such as spitter biters. And we'll cover those when we actually see them. But I think that's going to be enough for this episode. So I hope you've all enjoyed and that this was informative. Again, if there's anything specific that you would like to ask us, by all means, just drop a comment on my video or on Shen's. But until next time, do take care. Yep, and I think off camera, before we head out, off camera, we're probably going to set up some wall production, just the same way we set up our uh, ammo production and our belt production. Because we have our bricks being put in a box right now, we'll just put a little automated thing there to make some walls. All yep. it takes that is. That makes a, a good factor. point, yep. That's a brilliant idea. But until next time, everyone, take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.